go get yourself a pen and some paper. I'm going to tell you exactly how to become a good photographer. Welcome to another video. I wanted to share some thoughts with you that not too many here on YouTube or maybe even in person are willing to give you the secret sauce on how to become a good photographer. It's really, the answer is not hard, but people, for whatever reason, don't want to tell you. You ready? I'm going to give you the steps. Got a few of them. Write it down. The first one is the most important. Two words. Hard work. Yes, I know. All the videos and the camera companies, they want to tell you just go buy this and that and this lens and that lens and within a few days, boy, you're going to be winning the Landscape Photographer of the Year Award. You're not. Okay? Get it out of your head. It's hard work to learn how to be a good photographer. I don't care about what genre you shoot. It's hard work. You have to put in the work. When I first got into photography, I've mentioned this fellow before, my buddy Tom, and I went over his house when I was first starting to learn the dark room. And he sat me down and he said, 10 years. Now, granted, this was 25 years ago, but he said, 10 years. You got to learn about film. You have to learn about developing. You have to learn about composition and lighting and on and on and on and on. 10 years before you're going to even know what the heck you're talking about. And I sat there thinking, this guy's nuts. 10 years. I'm going to have this licked in no time. Give me a month. I had already shot a couple rolls of film. I knew what I was doing, right? Well, I don't know if 10 years is accurate, but I've also read 10,000 images and 100,000 images. And with the age of digital photography and computers and all the things you can do with that, mirrorless cameras now, better lenses, I can't, I can't put a time stamp on it because it's going to depend on how hard you work at it. But one thing for certain is, is hard work. Number two, research. You have to do a lot of research. There's a lot of things you need to learn. Go research, uh, look at images online or in magazines. Read a lot of magazines. I used to read tons of magazines when they were a lot more available than they are now. Now you can go online and look at images. Study those images. Look and see what you like about them, what you don't like about them. Learn about composition that way. Learn about lighting that way. But you can spend hours just looking at other people's photographs and learn things. Do your research. Find some photographers that, that you enjoy, that you like. Figure out why you like them. Look at other people's photographs and figure out maybe why you don't like them, even if they're considered really good photographers. So do your research. Number three, understand that it's going to take time. You have to have some patience. I know when I first got into this, I didn't have the patience. And at the time, granted, I had, I had my own business. I had three young kids at home. I had a wife that worked who stayed very busy, so I didn't have a lot of free time for it. As I've gotten older, my kids have moved out, it's easier for me to find that time. But you have to have patience and the time to learn how to do it. You can't just take your camera out one weekend and expect you're going to learn a lot of things. Also in, in that vein, learn from your mistakes. I know there were some images that I took years ago that I thought, man, I'm going to submit these to photo contests. These are winners. And I look back on them now and I, you know, say simple things like, what was I trying to say in that image? What's the subject? The lighting's awful. You know, the composition is terrible. 
And yet back then, because I didn't know any better, I thought that they were they were good images, and they weren't. And my friend Tom would always just say the line, "Is is that the best you can do? Do you think that's your best work?" And that's how he would always phrase it. Do you think that's your best work? And I'd say, yeah, what are you talking about? And he'd say, hmm, all right, well, keep at it. <laughs> I would just, oh, okay, you don't know what you're talking about, old man. And of course, looking back on it, it's like, yeah, he knew what he was talking about. I didn't know what I was talking about. So it's going to take a little time. Another thing you have to have is, you have to have an inquisitive nature. You have to want to learn it. You have to want to learn different genres of photography. You have to you have to study the difference between what lenses can do and what certain lenses can't do. And that goes back to your research. You know, lenses are designed to do different things. And back when I started, zoom lenses just didn't have the image quality that a good prime lens w would have. Now, it's a lot closer. You know, you can, like my 24 to 120 f4 Nikon S lens, if I was to shoot that at 50 millimeter and then go get a 50 millimeter prime, 50 millimeter prime would still be a little better, but not by a lot. Where in the old days, you'd go, yeah, that was shot on a prime. It's not that way anymore. But you still have to learn what lenses, why lenses are designed a certain way. For example, my two 50 millimeter lenses that I own, the Voigtlander 50 millimeter F2 Apo and the Nikon S lens, the 1.8, they're both great lenses. They're both 50 millimeter lenses. One's an F2, one's a 1.8, which is a you know, a slight difference. But the Apo lens is designed slightly different where maybe you use it more for architecture even though the Nikon is a very sharp lens. The Voigtlander's maybe a hair sharper. The coatings are different on different lenses. So you have to do your research to find out what it is that you want out of a lens. Again, that's going to take some research, it's going to take patience, it's going to take time, and it's hard work. But you also have to be inquisitive as to what it is you like to photograph. And that's going to take time, and it's probably going to change over time. I know when I first got into photography, all I wanted to do was shoot sports. Now I still shoot sports, but it's my grandkids playing t-ball and soccer, you know, rather than high school and and pro sports so it's it's different you know I used to shoot bird photography and now my bird photography is a whole lot better and yeah I'm a better photographer I think but my equipment is a whole lot better let's be honest it's a whole lot easier shooting bird photography now with a Nikon Z8 and a fast lens than back in the day with a even a Nikon F5 and a manual focus lens, uh, you know, it's a whole different animal now. Of course, your ramp up speed could be easier now than it was 15, 20 years ago, but that doesn't mean it's still going to be fast. It's, you, it doesn't mean that you still aren't going to have to put in the work to learn how to do it. And when I talk about an inquisitive nature, I mean, and it goes back to also with the research. Let's say you're a sports photographer. You have to understand the art of the game, no matter what sport it is you're photographing. Let's say you're shooting baseball. You want an action shot. There's a guy on first, nobody out, and you got a pitcher who throws a lot of ground balls. They're trying to induce a double play, right? So where should your focus be? You should probably already be focused around second base looking for a double play. That's what I mean by having an inquisitive nature and doing a little bit of research, understanding the game. You're a wedding photographer. You have to know 
what type of shot the bride's going to want. It, it doesn't matter what genre you're in. Uh, you're a nature photographer. Every season's going to be different. The light is different in every season. The location of where you are in the world, the light is going to be different. So you have to do a little bit of research and understand that. You have to have an inquisitive nature. You have to understand, let's say you want to be a black and white photographer. You might want to set up your composition and your lighting a little different. Even if your viewfinder is still in color, you still need to think in black and white. And you might want to set that up a little different if you're shooting in black and white than if you're going to be shooting in color. So there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to be inquisitive about. <clears throat> when it comes to that, something that goes along with that is you have to have a passion for it. Again, if you're a sports photographer and you don't like sports, you're probably not going to be that good of a sports photographer. Maybe you will, but more likely if you really love the game, you're probably going to be a better sports photographer. You want to be a landscape photographer, man, you, you got to really love the landscape. You have to really understand it. You have to feel like you're part of it when you're shooting in that landscape. Otherwise, you're probably not going to be as good as some of the other landscape photographers. So having a passion for just photography in, in general is a huge deal. And lastly, to go along with that, once you have a passion for something, learn what it is you want to photograph. Okay, and again, that could change over time. I know mine has changed as I've gotten older, and that's okay. But learn what it is you want to photograph and be good at it. You know, really immerse yourself in whatever genre of photography you want to photograph. So there's really no secret to becoming a good photographer. But in my mind, those are the steps. Understanding going into it that there's a lot of hard work that goes into it. There's research of understanding not only what it is you want to photograph, but understanding the techniques, understanding what it is you like about photography, what it is you don't like about photography, what attracts you to it. It's going to take you a little time to learn all that. And, and be inquisitive. Don't just get that camera and go, oh, Look, I'm going to go to the beach and shoot the sunrise. You know, expand. Learn to shoot woodlands. Learn to shoot portraits. Learn to shoot sports. Learn to shoot birds. Learn to shoot other things or at least attempt it. You may not be good at it, but at least you'll know, hey, I didn't really like that. You know, I didn't like sitting out in the woods waiting for the light to change. I didn't like having to get up at 5.30 to get there before sunrise. You know, I don't like portraits because I don't like dealing with people a whole lot. You know, learn those things. And that'll help you to be a better photographer. So that's it. Hard work, research, patience. Don't get frustrated with it. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to go out. There's plenty of times I go out and don't get any images. And any good photographer is going to tell you that. More times than not, they're going to go out and they're going to come back with nothing. Don't let some of these YouTube people convince you that every time they go out, they're coming home with a portfolio image. They're not. Okay? And you won't either, especially in the beginning. Have a passion for photography and learn what it is that you really want to shoot. Maybe you want to be a street photographer. Okay. But learn that. And learn what equipment you're really going to need to be a street photographer. Because a lot of them are going to tell you they know what type of camera they use and, and what focal length of lens they use. Whether it's a 
24, 28, 35, 50 millimeter lens. Maybe they have a little short zoom. There are reasons why they use the equipment they do. Sports photographers, 400 millimeter, 600 millimeter, 800 millimeter lens. Bird photographers, you know, I'm, I'm one of the few that don't use a 400 and a 600 for birds because I shoot large wading birds and I can get pretty close to them. So my go-to lens is a 24 to 120. So even though I thought about buying the 100 to 400, there are times I miss it, but more times than not, I'm just happy with the, the 24 to 120, but I had to learn that. Those are my thoughts on it. Just understand that you're not going to go to your camera shop and have some guy convince you that this is what you need, this is what you need. You know, you, you need, in order to be a good photographer, you need a Leica M11 with a Leica $12,000 lens. No, you don't especially in the beginning okay get yourself a, a starter camera and a kit lens and learn the basics that would be my advice don't spend a lot of money on it spend time on it put your effort into the time you spend learning about photography and then as you progress then you get a little bit better camera a little bit better lenses and go from there. Hope you learned something. Please like and subscribe if you did. Until next time, take good care.